Let's see how to use forms to update our data. Here we have a table that is displaying all the US states. And this is actually just using a query over our tutorial admin panel data source. So on the right, let's insert a form here to update that data. We'll start by inserting form. And in this video, we're going to cover how to use forms in the simplified mode. There's a big button here to connect a table. And this is going to generate a form for us from the data. We're going to choose, we want to create new entries with this form. And it's going to be the admin panel data source. And we're going to choose for the table, the US states table. All right. And that's really all it took. So now it generates all the fields available to us from that table. And we can start filling this in. So let's switch to interactive mode and start filling this in. So let's insert a state called AA. And it's in the region south, and it's called AAAA. All right. And we see it show up in the table. Um, and that's, that's really it. Now, let's look at the other type of form. So I'm going to delete this now. And um, let's see how to do this by starting over. I'm going to insert a form again. And this time, when I connect the table, I'm going to choose the other type, which is to update entries. Um, again, I'm going to choose the US states table. But this time, it's going to ask us, which US state do we want to update? And by default, it's going to use a lookup field of whatever is the primary key on the table, which is the state ID in this case. And what we want is for this form to be updating the row that is the selected row in the table. So we want to be able to select a row in the table and then update it from within this form. So for the lookup value, we're going to say um, we want to use the, sorry, the tables selected row key, which basically means the selected row ID. All right. And that's it. So now if we actually try selecting different rows, you can see the form is pre-populating with the initial values. And we can start making changes. So for instance, let's say that we want to assign Alabama to the north region instead. And you can see it is updated. So from here, you can really just start customizing the form to be however you like. So let's say that in this update form, we actually don't want to reveal the ID. We want it to be a hidden field, hidden field. And we also want, because we just don't want people changing that field, it should be a stable ID. And let's say that the this region, we actually want it to be a dropdown. We don't want people just typing whatever they want. We want to to let them choose from a few options. So we're going to choose for this, we're going to choose the select type. And we're going to add a few, a few items here. So let's say that there's the north region. And oops, I closed that. And let's say there's also the south region. All right, and maybe that's it for now. But we can just go ahead and choose the right region here. So let's switch it back to south. And also, you can add, very importantly, validation rules to your fields. So let's say that we want to make sure the state name is a required field. So I'm going to add a new validation rule that it's required. And also, for the state abbreviation, let's say we want this to actually just be a maximum of two characters. So let's try this out. So now you can see there's an asterisk next to the state name because it's actually required. If I clear it out, then I get a little error here. And if I make this longer, then I also get an error. So this is how you can add validation rules to your fields. And from here, uh, you can really just customize other aspects of the form. So you can choose the layout. If you want it to be a horizontal layout, you can choose whether it's left or right aligned and how much space is given to the label and control and whatnot, and whether it's displaying optional instead of required. So you can play with these settings. Now, the last thing I want to show in this video is what happens if the data source that you want to update is not a simple table where things map one to one with form fields. What if you have something more custom or you're trying to send to an API and you want to define your own fields? So let's see how to handle that case. I'm going to delete this form and start over. And I'm going to insert a new form. This time, we notice the default fields that it comes with are name and message. Let's stick with these for this example, but you can add more custom fields if you want by adding and removing them here. And by default, if you just try submitting a form like this, 
nothing actually happens because it's not connected to any anything when you submit. So in order for something to happen, you have to actually define an on submit interaction here. And on submit, basically we want to, let's actually first some example values. So we have something here and on submit, let's say we want to send this to a REST API. So we're going to add a step in this interaction, which is basically we're going to use an integration. This is a data integration and let's configure what that is actually doing. We're going to pick here. I have already set up an HTTP API integration called HTTP bin. This is actually hitting the HTTP bin service here, which just is a fake API and we'll use this for testing purposes. Uh, we want to post to this API to the post route and for the body, we want to actually just send a raw value. The entire form data. So I'm just selecting this and I'm going to go ahead and submit that. Actually, I'm going to test this right here and see what we get back. So this service actually just echoes back whatever we sent it and we can see that it's working. And maybe you want to add other steps here as well. So for instance, um, let's say after the submission, we also want to show a notification and say that, you know, thank you. And let's try that. So and that's really it. So that covers how to use forms in this very simplified mode where basically everything is configured from the right sidebar. And in the next video, we'll see how to use some more advanced features of forms.